This is a post-Christian podcast. Welcome to the Revolution Church Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Meet Your Congregation. I guess it's Revolutions Meet Your Congregation, just in case you're wondering which congregation you're meeting. As always, it is me, Jay Baker, and our friend Caleb is here. Oh, hey, you're here, Jay. Hi. I'm here. Yeah, hey, I can see you. We just met. That's good. Yeah. Like those Christmas specials. We're like, oh, who's at the door? <laughs> who's that, I wonder? So today we are interviewing our Instagram friend and Congo member, Cheryl. Hello, Cheryl. Hello. Can I wave? I don't know. You can wave. They can't see you, but we can. Oh, okay. There you go, then. <laughs> so, well, welcome to the to the show. Um, it's good to good to hear your voice and see you. I know we we know each other from Instagram. Yes, and Twitter and every other social media. Yeah, all outlet. the fun social medias. Mm-hmm. So, um, well, welcome to the show. Where where are you based? I'm in Columbus, Ohio. Okay. It's cold here too. Ohio. I grew up in Louisville, Kentucky. Oh yeah, you're not too far away. About three and a half hours. Yep, that was my stomping grounds. I have family in, uh, do you know uh, Wadsworth, Ohio? I do not, Yeah, it's no. a tiny little town, but anyways. Cheryl, I guess I would start out with just basically like, you know, you listen online and follow on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all that jazz. How'd you, how'd you kind of come to find out about Revolution and what we're doing? Well, I mean, obviously, your parents, I knew who they were, so... Yeah. Kind of made that connection there, but um, are you familiar with uh, Nar Martinez? Yes, Pastor Nar. Yep, I've known him for a um, long time. Yes, him actually made the connection with you. He used to tell me all the time, "You need to like, you know, listen, listen to you, read your books." And I just wasn't ready. Right, <laughs> I wasn't ready. At the time you made me too mad sometimes, so I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, but just in the past seven years, I've just been really diving into your stuff. It's like a lifeline, oh, really. That's, well, that's nice. nice to hear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry I had to make you mad first. <laughs> okay, it's okay. All the good ones do, right? Yeah, I guess that's true, yeah. I mean, can I can I ask what made you mad? Can I instigate a little bit? I'm just curious. Um, You don't have to say if you don't want to. I'm just, <laughs> this, is, this is just uh, juicy. I just I didn't have a, a the same view as gay affirming as you do. Okay. Um, okay. I mean I've had a complete conversion with that, obviously, but that's what kind of turned me off at first. I just Well you're you not know. alone on that one. That was yeah. that was a big one for a lot of people. And it's not it's it, yeah, it's not obvious either that, that you're doing this interview and and have changed sides on that debate because I think we've done some of these episodes with people who still are uh in that turf. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's just it just goes back to people being afraid of what they don't understand. That's all. That that's what my issue was. Mm. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally get that. Yeah, for sure. There's a time in my life where I would have reacted the same way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have a lot of the same background too. So, you know, you come from that whole mindset of you know God's going to be mad at me if I don't believe the right way right. or if I don't the right $1,000 words. It's like, mm. you know, you're going to come to hell. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so it's just trying to do the right thing. Well, how were you raised? How were you raised then? Were you raised in a, in a conservative church or something or? Yeah. Southern Baptist. Me too. <laughs> but you know, my parents, um, neither of them were raised in church though. So, hmm. um, they were kind of new to that whole thing. So okay. then they found, uh, assemblies of God oh. and then you know, it just escalated from there. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And they got excommunicated, you know, from church, um, really? the Southern Baptist that, oh yeah. Oh yeah. My, I had, um, two brothers that were gay. Um, and back in the eighties, it was not. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, and even though my parents didn't agree, they loved their kids, you know? Yeah. So we had to leave that church. And, you know, I was, I had to mention real quick, um, uh, friends of Tammy Faye. Yeah. They had this, your mom um, not being allowed to go in um, to Heritage and the, where they were recording. I, I, I can't remember exactly. I just, I related to it so much because. Um, I had taken my kids back to that church uh, that my parents had helped build. 
um, just a few years ago, and they wouldn't let me in there. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> wow. The, the altar. I was like, my mom kind of like, you know, put them nails in that altar there, but they would not let me in there. Interesting. <laughs> wow. Do you still identify yourself as a Christian? Is that still uh, a, a descriptor, an adjective that you use? That's such a big word. I, <laughs> I just say believer. Okay. I just say I'm a believer. You know, I believe in Jesus. I still have all those same. I mean, because I'm just in that phase where where I'm just rereading all of Jay's books and just not being angry while reading them mm-hmm. and just um, realizing a lot of things that I was raised by probably wasn't what I would have never have normally believed myself, if that makes any sense. How long ago did your views start to shift? Oh my gosh, probably about the last decade. Mm-hmm. Um, I lost my mom, um, mm-hmm. my dad. Uh, my whole family I'm sorry. <laughs> just started falling like flies. It's it's quite all right. It, it's um, a spirit of death is what people used to say. Why is there a spirit of death in your family? I, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> but um, I just, uh, my marriage, <laughs> everything just kind of crumbled around me. And um, I started seeing things that you know, that church family, that church base, they all started disappearing. And uh, I felt like Moses walking up that mountain all by myself, you know, how it goes. And uh, it just started having me re- reevaluate. I started reaching out to Nar more. Him and I started talking a lot more. And voila, <laughs> I'm still in that transition phase, though. I'm still learning. Okay. It's, it's just amazing how how unwelcoming the church can be, especially when you're in your time of need. And then to reject yes. you based on your family and people like that. I mean, it just, those are things that seem so, f- I know the scriptures that they would use, but they would have to flip them around a little bit, mm-hmm. you know? So I, I, cause I've heard them used before, but it doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Like it's really a lot of like gymnastics or what acrobatics that they have to do in order to, to do that. And it seems such like a inhumane way to treat people. I just don't understand like, you know, how that is that, that, the church becomes such a uh, agent of hate agent of hate. Yeah. And I mean, it just adds insult to injury, Mm -hmm. you know, when you're going through rough times and then they just kind of just like make it worse. And it seems like, you know, the Bible says, you know, no, Jesus was a Jesus. Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do mm-hmm. come to call centers. Mm -hmm. Not those who think they're good enough. You know, and my mom always said that the church should be more like a hospital than a courtroom. But unfortunately, you know, we've become like a, like a, a clubhouse, you know, like, mm. you know, Oh, you can't come into the club, you know, like this exclusive club of, right. of perfect people. Right. I used to uh, determine that by who was invited to go out to eat after Sunday. Uh, <laughs> after Sunday. Yeah. Whoever was invited to go out after eat that that's the cool kids club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Very true. I think there are some people in the church that, that, you know, that I, I still talk to, you know, that are that I still consider friends, but a very, very handful of, of people, not even, you know, mm-hmm. nearly what you thought you had. You think you have this whole huge body of family right. and you don't. <laughs> yeah. You just don't. Yeah. Church, church is a community and it's a real bummer when it becomes an exclusive community, you know, when it becomes an elitist community. That's a real, really discouraging. It is. And it's the illusion that you think that you have a family. So in somebody like my case, you know, when when I, I literally don't <laughs> have any family, I just have my children. Um, and then after a while, I didn't even have my husband. I didn't have this huge array of family like I thought I had. And it was that illusion um, that just broke my heart. It still breaks my heart. If I talk about it, I'll cry. But um you know, you just, you feel real lonely. Mm. You feel abandoned all over again. Um, I mean, I'm in my situation when I lost my parents, my mom had Alzheimer's. So it was like losing her all over again. (laughs) And then, you know, when she died, it was like losing my father all over again. So then when everything happened with the church, I just felt real abandoned. (laughs) I still do, but you know, you work through it. Mm-hmm. 
But I don't ever look at that as God's fault. I, I do want to say that. I, I don't look at that as God's fault because I still look at him as, as a father and as a covering. Um, I, I do look at him as, you know, my savior. I, I Can I say that? Yeah, you can say <laughs> whatever you want. I don't want anyone to be mad at me. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I do still feel that way. Um, but just as the church is a body and the whole, I... I that cover has been ripped off. <laughs> mm. Yeah. God, it's tough. You know, I mean, I, losing family. I mean, I lost my mom and my marriage, my first marriage fell apart. My second marriage has fallen apart. And, you know, you lose like not just the marriage, but, you know, in-laws and things like that. Everything gets weird and people stop talking. Yeah. And it's like you lose family and then you try to have a community and, you know. I, I honestly just would never, ever at this point in my life look for a community in a church, mm-hmm. you know, or really, I mean, I, 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 I realize just having cl- a few close friends has been helpful for me, you know, and just kind of letting that be my family. And that's good. And, and that's good that you found those people because those people are rare too. Yeah, really are rare, you know, and so I, I feel like that's, I don't know. I mean, I, I honestly would say that the worst thing to do is put your faith in church, you know. And and because they're all people and they're all, I mean, I don't know. I could go on for hours, but yeah, they are people. And yeah. Often they. And it's hard though. It's hard that when you were raised in that, you know, where Sundays was our day, you know, we would leave, do three services a day. You know, my ex-husband was a youth pastor. So, you know, we had four children. And so it's like, that was our day. And if we had a revival, we were at church every night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's like our whole life was wrapped in church. So for my kids and me, that's that's what's so hard right now. It's like it's weird on Sunday. Like when I started doing revolution, I I, I said I have to be home by noon because church is at 11. <laughs> and my daughter was like church. She goes, you're going to church. <laughs> She's like, I haven't heard you say that in like years. And I'm like, well, it's online. It's you know, so I mean, that's weird for them to hear. Mm-hmm. But when our whole thing is wrapped up in church, it's like it's so weird trying to find your own identity again. It's like having amnesia and <laughs> just relearning mm. your life in a way. It's just weird. Totally. Yeah, no, I mean, I get it. I mean, for me growing up, I mean, my parents had the church. I went to the school there. You know, all my friends were there. Most of the, you know, their employees of my family. You know, and then the scandal hit. It was like all of a sudden everything I knew, you know, the house was gone. My friends were gone. My family, you know, no one wanted to be around us. And it was just like, you know, I feel like I got some, like post-traumatic stress disorder from just that that rejection. And I don't think people realize like the yeah. the damage they do to others when you excommunicate somebody or you do something like that. You cause such mental damage. That seems like a greater sin to me than anything that you could kick somebody out for you know definitely agree mm. definitely not a safe place always no. no and it's like what you say i mean nobody can hurt you like the church nobody can hurt you like your family i guess yeah how long have you been listening for cheryl for revolution in general yeah. just like the past month and a half <laughs> cool but i've known about jay for the past i don't know his whole life really yeah. technically <laughs> yeah sure 10 years Cool. You know, so, but didn't dive in until my life started to fall apart. I know that sounds terrible. No, no. <laughs> sounds so awful. No, not at all. I mean, I, I feel like that's where I've been the past year. Some change in my life is just kind of having to implode again. And I, you kind of get tired of these implosions. And I'm trying to learn to live my life in a different way where I don't put so much uh, investment into other people or put so much of my worth yeah. into other people, even in like intimate relationships just because I've learned that it's unpredictable what can happen to you, you know? I mean, my dad used to say, you know, you just stay disappointed, you know, you'll, (laughs) you'll never have your expectation, you know, damaged, but it's like, you can't live like that either. But I mean, with, with Jay, I mean, Caleb, you asked how long I've been listening for it. I, you know, Jay's just familiar. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, and when I was saying earlier, just felt like I was having amnesia. I just have to run what feels like home. And Jay feels like home 
if I'm allowed to yeah, say that. Thanks. Oh, <laughs> that's nice to yeah. hear. I'm gonna get. Just gonna be. I'm gonna take that in. Yeah. I don't know how to marinate in that. Marinate. <laughs> yeah. Not say something weird back like "Happy Birthday" or whatever. I don't know. I don't know how to take a compliment. <laughs> Happy Birthday. <laughs> Just some weird thing because I don't know how to take a compliment sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I for a lot of people though, man, it it is. You know, people just run to what feels like home. And, you know, your parents were home to a lot of people. Yeah. They were home to my parents. And you're home to me. Uh, <laughs> you're stuck with me. Well, good. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, I, I have I have to say, I think we've set up revolution in a way where it's, you know, we make sure people know that it's not a safe place or have any, you know, expectations because it's easy to disappoint. And uh, I hope that we're kind of more, way more transparent than that. And I've never kick anybody out of the church you know so you had an atheist talk yeah too long ago so we don't you know <clears throat> those aren't games that i'm able to play i mean i never hired staff based on their deeds or their family or anything like that because you know when you've been shit on like that you don't want to return the favor you know you realize no. the darkness of it and it's like i don't even want i don't wish some of the stuff i've had said to me by people who are the closest to me i would not say to my worst enemy you know, and so um, I guess that's part of having empathy and learning from 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 loss and learning from tough roads and learning from being rejected and and hopefully you know I think that's the thing is like some people take it and they they can m move it back and, and separate it from what Christianity is and and what church is and then there's some people who yeah. just have to leave the whole thing and I actually kind of get both ways I understand like you know. I don't blame people for just going, just completely leaving the church, you know. But if there's also a way to say, hey, you know, not, you know, it might just be bad theology or it might just be people who are, you know, toxic and sick themselves that mm. didn't understand, you know. Yeah. Um, or maybe we're the ones and we're just delusional. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a strong possibility. <laughs> yeah, it is strong. Uh, but we'll just pretend we're not. Uh -huh. We have it all together here. <laughs> yeah, right. We have the secret message. Uh -huh. And you, if us. you if you want to come here, you can, but we're not going to make you. Yeah. We know. <laughs> <laughs> we know we are the right way. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just trust us. All right. Well, here's our big question of the day, or every uh, day that we do the, 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 the Meet Your Congregation. Meet Your Congo. Um, They're so, calling Congos now. I know. <laughs> Going to the Congo. Um, I don't know if it's offensive to... Oh shit! Anybody? <laughs> I'm gonna have to bleep that. Uh, I don't know. Um, so we we ask is is there anything that you think we could be doing better as basically a church and an online community and that type of thing of like what could revolution improve on? Um, any advice? Anything like that? Let's see. Stop having your stuff crash. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry about that today. What was it? The, when the, no, the fine, video fine. feed... I'm just talking shit. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, that's right. It crashed today. That, well, I found out that was my fault because I don't have the right... Um, Wi-Fi password. Wi-Fi password, even though Caleb told me like two weeks ago that it had changed and I completely just... Boop. Oh. <laughs> I'm just talking shit. You guys are fine. <laughs> um, I guess my... The only thing I would make it like a... Then again, I'm... You know, my Baptist roots... <laughs> <laughs> Just make it more accessible for people mm. to like, because you always encourage people to follow one another. Yeah. Uh, but I don't always remember <laughs> who's in there or um, who's even a part or who wants to follow me or I don't know, just a way to make it more easier to follow one another, get to know each other a little better. Okay. That's a good idea. Um, Maybe like a follow Friday type thing. Like they used to do on Twitter, yeah. Oh, yeah. But we could do it like follow your congregation, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then have everybody's little hashtag. Yeah, or like a, a group chat would be easy enough. We yeah. do have we have the Facebook page, um, mm -hmm. but we yeah we we don't really. But if we did like a Twitter thing and an Instagram thing where we just put people's hashtags, well, like, or their ats, their ats, yeah, for people who are up for it, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it's like, hey, there's some they... people who are involved in the church to follow on Instagram. Make a or, list, and then I could do like, hey, it's. Follow your congregation Friday on mm. Twitter, and then I'll put their their at. Yeah, it's funny too because we have a lot of listeners who are uh, physically close to each other, you know, that have never interacted, oh. and then um, I think we've had we've had some connections actually made with people through the social media stuff who didn't even know that they were in each other's neck of the woods. 
So that's a that's a great idea, Cheryl. Well, thank you. Yeah. I never shut the fuck up. So I'm always looking for people to talk to. Yeah. <laughs> <Yep>. Unity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, your dad would probably say kingdom. <laughs> yes, kingdom builders. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Sorry. Me, no, me and my dad have all sorts of issues around semantics. Like he does, at least. And I'm always like, well, uh, you know, he wants me to call it a calling. I call it a haunting. You know, we have all these different. <laughs> and we're saying the same things. It's like if we could just yeah. accept the fact that we have different words for it. Right. You know, that's something I'm really working on is trying to, in my own mind, reclaim some Christianese terms. Yeah. You know, and say, well, mm-hmm. I can use that term too, but now for me it means this. Yeah. You know, and not not what it used to, but it's a uh, it can be it can be triggering. It's a tricky thing. Well, to philosophers do. do that. They'll use a word, and it won't mean the same thing as it does mm-hmm. in, outside of philosophy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And no one understands that shit. So. <laughs> yeah, that's good the luck thing. with that. It's alienating. Well, thank you, Cheryl, so much for for talking with us today. Well, thanks for having me. I had a blast. I was nervous as hell. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh no, no need to be nervous. It was great. And hopefully, we'll you'll meet some revolutioners in Ohio. Yeah. Hashtag. Yes. Meet your Ohio Congo. Yeah. Well, we'll put this up and make sure. You know, and we're, I think we'll do that follow Friday idea that's or a good follow idea. congregation idea. All right. So thank you for that. You are so welcome. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks for talking to me. You guys have a great day. You too. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. 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 We'd like to remind you that our ministry is supported 100% by listeners like you. To make your 100% tax-deductible donation today, please visit revolutionchurch.com slash donate. You can also learn more by clicking the donate section on the website. If you enjoyed this show, you might also like Loosen the Bible Belt with Kristen Becker and myself, Jay Baker. And it was that moment. And for me, I was 10 years old, so I remember yeah. hearing about it because I remember being scared of the idea of AIDS and things like that. But it also triggered something in my brain, you know, huh. in my work, especially 10, 11, 12, 13 years ago, where I became an ally and became very outspoken right. on LGBTQ beha- uh, 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 issues and, and lost a lot because of it, more though so than my parents did for the interview and you, which is surprising. Um, you know, th- I guess they were just a machine at the time, but you know, it really cost a lot, but it, it was because I saw the bravery in my mother. I saw the bravery in someone like you, you know what I mean? That I'm able to continue my work and go, these boxes that we've created in religion have to be destroyed. Yes. You know, there has to be room at the table for everyone and forgiveness yes. and love and hope for everyone, even for yes. those when we misunderstand each other. You know, and because I would say like, you know, there was no like, I don't know if my mom ever came out completely as being affirming, but I know that it didn't matter to her. All that mattered to her was love. And for me, I built on that foundation. And so I have to say, if it wasn't probably for that day and that interview and that moment in time, you know, I don't know where my career would be. I don't know where my mother's career would have been. You know, it was people in the gay community who embraced her when we lost everything. Yeah. And kept yeah. her afloat. You know, the eyes of Tammy Faye was made by World of Wonder, which is run by two gay men who, you know, loved Tammy Faye, you know, yeah. and everyone I've talked to always goes back to that video, to that moment in time. Everywhere I go, every conference I've been to, everywhere I've spoken, as soon as I became an ally, people started saying that video, the video, the video, the video, you know, and it was just – I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being brave enough to do it. And I'm so glad that they found someone who was a pastor and had AIDS and things like that. Because when I look at that, it made me feel like, you know, I don't have half of that against me. You know, I have mm-hmm. to make the right choice. I've got to, I've got to follow my convictions, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and seeing my mother to be able to be brave to do that. And for you two to come together and have that moment. Um, yeah. I don't know how many lives it changed for the people who saw it, but I know for me and I know for my house, um, it, it changed us forever, and I, I'm eternally grateful. 